Yeah, hi everyone. We'll start in some time. Just give a minute. So it's still 9.28, I'm not sure how many have joined, but we will start in a couple of minutes, so three minutes. Just hold on, I'm just still checking how it works. No, no video is coming in. Yeah, I do know. Just So I believe I'm live, uh, so we'll start in another minute. Oh, I think it's already 30, so we'll start. I'm just trying to figure out. But the basic idea of this specific session is basically to help you to basically take a concept and try to go about explaining how to apply those concepts. So if I have an approach in place, I can definitely solve things faster. And if I can solve things faster, that will definitely help me to do very well as far as the exam is concerned. Right. So, basic idea about this is to help to solve things uh, faster. So, we'll take the small, small approaches, try to look at what sums that we can take up to solve it and then go about it. Look, understand, in the exams that come, like in the aptitude examinations, you don't require steps or you need to devise your own steps that will help you to solve things fast. Because if you go back to your school level methods, which requires a lot of steps, a lot of formulas, it normally takes a longer time to solve. Right. It takes a longer time to solve and that is not very good when you're talking of speed and time etc. Because the more the time you take per question, the less the time you will get to solve you know, more questions. You will be able to solve less a number of questions and that will always be a problem. And this is true for you know multiple exams, whether it be CAT or GMAT or any other exams. So the key, at least in mathematics section, to be really fast is to devise methods where you can save time. So what we are trying to do today is we will take a concept which is there and try to look at how to go about solving and trying to save time. That's the basic idea of the whole thing. All right. Also understand whatever I teach right now are the approaches. Now, what people tend to do is they will see the approach, 
then they go and they don't do it, don't apply it. So you tend to forget the approach. If you really want to be good in the approach, you need to keep applying the approach to different subs. It, that, that is the only time where you'll be able to learn it and understand it better. If you don't apply it, you will not be able to learn the approach. So therefore, it is very important that you, you know, use this approach at all. Also, it's very important that you don't focus on too many approaches. So there's, there's also one bad habit of people, uh, students saying that I will go to 10 such sources and learn 10 different things. And that is not good because what happens is when you learn different concepts and different approaches in different places, you're not applying the same approach in multiple places. So if you don't keep on applying, you don't be good at it. So what will happen is you will be jack of all trades or jack of different approaches, but master of none. And because you're jack of all trades, if there is a twist in the sum, you may not be able to apply the approaches because you know the approaches, but you have not mastered the approach because you have not practiced enough. So therefore, if you really want to be good, it is important that you master the approach by you know trying to keep on applying the methods as far as possible. Okay, that is what is important as far as the aptitude exam is concerned. So today we'll take up a small concept and then try to apply it uh, and go about it. So we'll take a few concepts. What I also want you to do is give me feedbacks on uh, whatever I do so that maybe then I can keep improving on how to go about it. I mean, that's what the whole idea is. I mean, we have first session, so I'm still exploring the whole idea about, uh, you know, the live session, etc. not been very regular with the live. So I will try to be regular as far as possible so that I can maybe see how I can help you. But yes, over a period of time, what I would expect is to give me a feedback on what and how to go about doing things. That's what I would expect from you. Right. So we will start with, uh, uh, let's say, let's start with the uh, first approach. So today what we are looking at the approach called ratio approach and time speed distance. A ratio approach is an approach that can be used in many places. So we are looking at a particular approach called ratio approach and the application is basically in time speed distance. So that's what we do. Now again to go back, I mean who all can basically this video help? This video can basically help in basically students who are preparing for management entrance exam. Any, I mean not necessary CAT. So it can be CAT, uh, ZAD, CET, NMAT, CMAT, etc. It can also help for students who are writing IPM, BBA. It can also help for people writing GMAT. It can help for any like government examinations as well. So anyone, I mean this concept or this whatever I'm putting it across should help you to improve. That's the basic idea behind this whole session. So let's start with maybe the ratio approach. So when you're talking of a ratio approach in time predictions, first let's try to understand time predictions. When you're solving time speed distance, there is only one formula that is speed is equal to distance upon time. Okay, that's the one approach which is there. Right, so speed is equal to distance upon time. Then there are different things which comes across out here. So if time is same, let's say if time is constant. Okay, time is constant. Then we say speed is directly proportional to distance. Okay, if time is constant, then speed is directly proportional to distance. So let's try to take a sum and try to look at how to apply this sum. Now the advantage of this method is that if you know this method, you can even solve this in the mind. Any sum that you can solve in the mind, you can definitely be faster. That's a help. So that means if you can do it in the mind, you can definitely help. Okay, let's start with the, uh, uh, so this sum. Try to solve in the mind. That's what is very important and see if you can do it fast. Okay. I'll just give you a gist of how to go about solving in the mind. Then I'll explain it to you. So a thief is spotted by a policeman from a distance of 100 meters. When the policeman starts the chase, the thief also starts running. So difference between the distance is 100. The speed of the thief is 8 kilometers per hour and that of the policeman is 10 kilometers per hour. So if you look at speed, the ratio is 8 and 10. So ratio is 8 is to 10. Now, difference of 8 and 10 is 2. Remember, uh, distance is directly proportional to speed because time is the same. If distance is directly proportional to speed, if the ratio of speed is 8 is to 10, the ratio of the distance also is 8 is to 10. The difference of 8 and 10 is 2. 2 stands for 150 times. So 8 will stand for 450 times. I'll explain it to you by writing. I mean, I just try to explain it to you by solving orally. 
Now here they given speed. They given speed of the thief. They given the speed of the policeman. Now the speed is given as eight and ten. Now this method is normally used when both timing is given, both speeds are given, or both or time is given something on that. So your both speed is given eight and ten. So the ratio of the speed is eight is to ten. As we discussed earlier, since time is constant, the so time is same out here. Speed is directly proportional distance, which means if speed is eight is to ten, the distance also will be eight is to ten, directly proportional. If distance is eight is to ten, the difference of eight and ten is two. Two stands for hundred meters, fifty times. So how much will thief cover? Eight will stand for four hundred meters. You directly get the answer. Fourth option, right? I repeat this: the ratio method. Since time is constant, speed is directly proportional to distance. I know speed is eight is to ten, so distance will be eight is to ten. Difference of eight and ten distance covered by them given out here is two. Ten and eight is two. But actual distance covered difference between them is hundred meters. Difference between the distance covered. Because the policeman has to cover hundred meters more than a thief to catch the thief. Fifty times. So automatically we want how much will the thief run? The thief will run eight. So eight will stand for eight fifty is at four hundred. You get four hundred meters. Right? I hope this is clear. Right? So basic idea is to find the ratios and try to get the answer. So we'll take a few more sums to try to understand this concept. Now, as we said that uh, speed is equal to distance upon time. Last time, what we said was if time is same, then speed is directly proportional to distance. But if distance is constant, if distance is same, then speed is inversely proportional to time. You can make out. If I go faster, I'll take less time. Okay. If I go fast. I will tend to take less time. The speed is inversely proportional to time, right? If distance is constant, let's try to understand by taking an example. So here, if you look at it, uh, so it starts at the same time at 40 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers per hour. The distance is the same. Total distance is the same. If distance is the same, then speed is inversely proportional to time. So let's say before. And after, or A and B. So A and B, if you look at it, speed is 40 and 50, the ratio of speed. Or you can say 4 is to 5 speed. So time will be 5 is to 4. As we said earlier, if distance is constant, then speed is inversely proportional to time. So time will be 5 is to 4. If time is 5 is to 4, difference in 5 and 4 is 1. But we know difference is fifteen minutes. Difference is fifteen minutes, fifteen times. So take any one of them. So here, fifteen times will give you sixty minutes. So that means it travels at fifty kilometers per hour for one hour. So distance is speed into time. Speed is fifty kilometers per hour for one hour. So third option, fifty. I repeat this again. The ratio of speed is forty and fifty, or four is to five, with A and B. As distance is constant, speed is inversely proportional to time. So time will be five is to four, reverse. Difference of five and four is one. We want the difference as fifteen, fifteen times. So automatically, the time taken by B will be four into fifteen, sixty minutes. So fifty kilometers per hour. For 60 minutes, which is one hour, will give you 50 as a distance. You can this also. You 15 into 5 into 15 is 75 minutes. So traveling 40 kilometers per hour for 75 minutes will also give you 50. I mean, you can take either one of them. You need not take both, but the same concept. Okay, let's look at applying it for few more sums. Look, the more you apply the sum, the better it is. Here again. Ratio of the speed, if you look at it, okay. So before and after. Walking six seven of the speed, and before speed is seven, the new speed is six because he's walking six seven of the speed. Six is new, and seven is old. So after the six, before the seven speed. So more the speed, less the time. So time will be six is to seven. 
6 and 7 difference is 1. P1 difference is 12, which is 12 times. So 6 will stand for into 12, 72 minutes. So again the same distance is equal to speed into time. Speed is 7, time is 72 upon 60, convert to hours, right? And you should be able to get the answer, right? 12, 5 are 12, 6 are 42 upon 5 if you look at it. Okay. And then you can basically try to find out the time in terms of minutes. That's how you go about solving it. Okay. I'll repeat this again. You want the, the usual time taken, but the time taken will be before time 72 minutes. 72 will be 1 hour 12 minutes. This is what I calculated was distance. We wanted a time taken. So, second option. I repeat this again. Ratio of speed is 7 is to 6. So, ratio of time taken is 6 is to 7. Difference is 1. 1 stands for 12 because difference is 12 minutes. So, 6 will stand for 72, the normal time. 72 minutes is 1 hour 12 minutes. You will get the answer as second option. Right. Let's take a little more tougher sum. Okay. Just to understand the concept, let's take a sum which is slightly tougher than before. But the same thing, they are given the speed, they are given the speed 2.5 and 3 km per hour. So before and after again I will take, if he goes at 2.5 and he goes at 3, that is the ratio of the speed, which is 5 is to 6, the ratio of the speed. Student goes to school at a rate of 2.5 km per hour and second time he goes at 3 km per hour. So ratio of the speed is 2.5 and 3 or 5 is to 6. So ratio of the time will be 6 is to 5. Now, difference out here is 1, but I want difference here it reaches 6 minutes late, here it reaches 10 minutes early. So, difference is 16 minutes. So, 5 will stand for 5 16s are 80 minutes. Right. So, distance is equal to speed into time. Speed is 3 kilometers per hour, time is 80 upon 60. Convert to hours. You will get the answer as 4 kilometers. Second option. Same thing, if you get used to it, you become much faster at solving it. I mean, I am not using equations, I am just trying to look at the approach and try, try to get it faster. Called a ratio approach. This approach can be also used in work and some other sums. We will come to those application later on. Right now, I am trying to use this approach in times for distance. If a particular approach can be used in number of sums, it is always useful. Then you do not have to remember too many approaches. So, therefore, you learn an approach which can be used for multiple sums. That helps you to give, you know, Remember less stuff and maybe apply it better. Leaving home at the same time, Amit reaches 10.15 am if he travels at 8 km per hour, 9.40 am if he travels at 15 km per hour. So again they are given two times, two speeds. So we can obviously take the speed ratio as 8 is to 15. So time ratio will be 15 is to 8, reverse. As I said, more the speed, less the time. So therefore, inverse, if the ratio of speed is 8 is to 15, the ratio of time will be 15 is to 8. The difference is 7. Now, what is the difference in time? 9.40 and 10.15, the difference is 35 minutes. So, I know 7 stands for 35 minutes, 5 times. So, 15 stands for 5 times, 75 minutes. So we know distance is equal to speed into time. Speed is 8. Time is 75 upon 60. 5, 4. You will get basically, if you look at it, 10 kilometers. Now what we want, we want the speed. If he is leaving at 10, 9, 10 and reaching at 10, 10. So 50 minutes. Leaving at 9, 10 and reaching at 10, 10. That is 50 minutes. So, 50 minutes he has to travel 10 kilometers. So, speed is distance upon time, 10 kilometers upon 50 minutes. You have to convert to hours. We will be giving you 12 kilometers per hour. First option. Again, the same thing. Ratio is 8 is to 15 speed. Ratio of time is 15 to 8. Difference is 7. But here, difference is 35, 5 times. So, automatically, time out here becomes 15, 5 to 75 minutes when you travel at 8 kilometers per hour. From there, you get a distance which comes to 10 kilometers. 
8 into 75 minutes will give you 10 kilometers. If you use this 10 kilometers, speed is distance upon time, distance is 10 kilometers, time is 50 minutes, you will get the answer is 12 kilometers. Okay, one more, item. this will come in the examination. A man leaves home and walks at a speed of 12 kilometers per hour. You think this, again, look at the speeds, they are given 12 and 15. So they are given the speed 12 and they are given the speed 15 or 4 is to 5. So time taken will be 5 is to 4. More the speed, less the time. So here reaches 10 minutes after, here reaches 10 minutes before. So difference in time is 20. Your difference is 1, but V1 stands for 20. So you can take any one of them. 5 will stand for 100. So it travels, distance is equal to speed into time. Speed is 12 kilometers per hour, time is 100 minutes. We will get distance is 20 kilometers. That will be the answer. Right? Speed is 12 to 15 or 4 to 5. Time is 5 to 4. Reverse. If time is 5 to 4, difference of 5 and 4 is 1. 1 stands for 20. Because 10 minutes after and 10 minutes before, the difference is 20 minutes. So 5 will stand for 100. So distance is speed into time. Speed is 12 kilometers per hour. Time is 100 minutes. That gives you 20 kilometers. So I've just taken one approach of this ratio and looked at how to apply for different kind of sums. Now this ratio approach can be used for different sums also like work in other areas. We look at how to apply. The more you use it, the better you will be. So that means if you really are, if you really feel this approach is good, it's very important that you keep on applying this approach to different sums. And over a period of time, you can do it maybe orally. For example, you know, 12 and 15, 4 is to 5, 5 is to 4, difference is 20 minutes. So multiply by 20, you get 100 minutes. So 12 kilometers per hour, 100 minutes. Solve it, you will get 20 kilometers. You may write a little bit in between, but if you can do some part of it orally, you can do it much faster. But yes, understand the approach and solve it. I'm sure that will help you to do well. Right? This particular approach, as I said, will help you for multiple examinations, including MBA entrance, GMAT, banking exam, or wherever it is gone for after the exam. So I'm taking general approaches that will help you. Hope that helps. Thank you.